Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing the brake pads on the rear of the Peugeot 206. This is a 2006 model 1.6 Sport. So the rear brakes are discs. So that's what we'll be replacing today. So what do we need to do the job? Let's have a look. We need the brake pads. We need a 20, not 20, a 17 mil socket to remove the wheel nuts plus your security uh, locking nut. We need a T20 Torx to get access to the uh, handbrake adjuster. We need a punch and a hammer to knock out the little um, retaining um, wedge uh, which we'll show you in the um, video. I need a pick or a pair of pliers. Uh, having just done the job I think a pair of pliers uh, supersedes a pick and that is to remove the um, spring that actually stops the uh, wedge that we just talked about moving and coming out and you're losing your brake pads all over the road. And we need a long thin screwdriver in order to turn the piston in the brake caliper to allow us to um, return, it, return it into its cylinder so that we can fit the new brake pads. So that's all you need, plus of course copper grease for when you're reassembling the new brake pads. Right, the first thing we do to change the brakes is remove the rear wheel and we've got a 17 mil socket plus the security nut so just take the wheel off there we go always put your bits and pieces in a tray to avoid losing them. I've lost count of the number of times something rolls somewhere and you spent half an hour trying to find it. Okay, so now we can get in and see what we need to do with the brakes. Right, so here are the brake pads that we need to remove. They're held on at the bottom by this bar here, which slots in, and that's retained by this clip here uh, to stop it moving and coming out. Uh, it's also retained by these two clips on one on each brake pad, and together they give a spring action to hold the brake pads in place so that they don't move. So that's the first job we need to do, is remove the bar, then we'll be able to push back on the piston and remove the brake pads. We also need to make sure that this down here, which is a handbrake lever, is uh, not in tension, uh, which would make it more difficult to wind back the piston. So that's the next job. So let's get that done. We release the handbrake cable a little bit more to give us more room for manoeuvre. We need to remove this uh, trim panel over the handbrake to allow us to uh, access a nut to release the tension. So I've released a little tab at the back of the console. As you see there, and there is one little screw just in there. You probably can't see it, but uh, once I've undone that, I can pull that uh, center console out, console out and access the nut. Turns out it's not a 14 mil, it's actually a 13 mil. So to make life a lot easier, fairly loose see what the and now you can see that the 
handbrake cable is nice and loose and that makes it an easier job to get the brake pads out. One thing I would make clear, which I forgot at the start, is to make sure you use uh, an axle stand plus your jack. It just makes the job a lot safer. If the jack fails then you've got a backup to hold the car in the air and not give you a squashed something or other. So be safe. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this spring clip here. Ah. That's what I didn't want to happen. It's shot somewhere. So I'll turn you off so I'll find so we can go and search for that. Phew, luckily I found it. And that's the bugger there. And that's what stops this bar from moving and sliding out. In fact, I think it probably wouldn't slide out because there's rust holding it in at the minute. Anyway, that's the next job, knocking that out. So in order to knock this bar out, we need a punch and a hammer. Let's give that a go. And there we have it. Give that a clean up and we use uh, some copper grease to stop it wedging in place next time the brakes need to be uh, changed. So with that out and safely tucked away, we can now take off these springs. Here we go, and that's off. We're in a safe place. Now the second one. See if I can do this a bit easier. Oops. Yes, that is the answer. And luckily it hasn't gone half a mile, so that's that. So now the brake pads should be easy to get off now, but we might have to winding the piston so let's see how easy they are to remove with a little bit of wiggling out we've made enough room to get the brake pad out we'll have a look at those once we've got them both out pull it forward and then we can just slip that one out as well So these are our brake pads, they were an advisory on the last MOT and as you can say that one's got a bit of meat in it but this one, uh, yeah it's getting quite low so um, they should be changed and that's what we're going to do. So the next thing is to tidy up the bits and pieces that we've got and then come back and refit the pads. Now there is a way of fitting these pads. Um, first of all I'm going to have to rewind that. Okay, in order to wind back the uh, piston uh, to allow us to fit the new brakes because there's probably not going to be enough room, we need to wind this back and you can't just push it. You need to wind the there are slots, there are four slots altogether, two slots, and you have to engage and wind. And wind, and then you can Oops, then you can 
That's not going. That should have gone in, so... Okay, now we've uh, wound the piston back. We'll see if it's wound back enough to fit both brake pads. Remember this button here needs to coincide with that recess there. So if we slot that in, it's gone all the way. And we pull this all the way forward. And there you go. That's the next second pad fully slotted home. Now before we go ahead and tighten everything up and put the clips in place, we must remember to put a smear of copper grease on here, here and on these little ears so things don't seize up and they're easy to get out next time. So making sure not to get any of the copper grease on the disc or the pad surface we just put a little bit on there. So and also on these little tabs. So that's the first one done and we can slide that into position carefully. And that's located. Just double check. Yep, that's located. So put some copper slip on this one, that should be enough, and then slot this one in. There we go. So now we need to put on the springs and the retaining. So we've now got the springs located correctly. So the top of the spring must be over this little lip here. So it forces onto the back of the caliper. Now we've got to try and locate this in place by holding everything else in. So it's slid in there, okay. Now this one, it wants to go. There we go. Now we've got the tensioning bar in and we've got to push it far enough in so that that hole in that end of the bar actually allows the spring clip to uh, go through and locate itself and that avoids this bar slipping out and your brake pads toddling off down the road somewhere. So let's just find the pin. I'll definitely put it in here somewhere. Ah, here it is. So now what we've got to do is locate this. That way around. And that's fully home. And these are solid. Now we'll just go and give the brake pedal a pump. Yeah, all fine. Okay, everything's solid and in place. Now we can put the uh, wheel hub back. Sorry, we can put the wheels back on and then we'll turn the car around and give it another go. Right, that's a better view. And here you can see the, the old uh, pads in and you can see the position of the spring. Uh, the top has to go up there and this is in tension because of the wedge here at the bottom. So we'll do exactly the same as we did in the previous, uh, on the previous side. The first thing to come out 
is this little spring and I'll try not to lose it this time. There we go. That's a little spring. First of all we've got to bang out this wedge here. So that's a punch and a hammer. I might get my head in the way here but she'll have to forgive me for that. Here we go, out. That was a lot more difficult than the previous side, probably because it's probably held in with a bit of rust. Anyway, put that safe. So now we can try and get the pads out. There we go, keep the spring. The next one out. There you go. Let's wind this back and get the new pads in. So now we've got both both pads in. We can now start to fit the springs. Like so. The second one. There is a right way and a wrong way around for these, as you can see. Now, for the last little bit, we need to get the little wedge in to hold everything in position. Just put a little smear of grease on this one. Too much there. There we go. And so now, the awkward bit. Bearing in mind that that has got to go that way round. And just getting it started. There we go. And same for here. Oh, that was, seemed rather easy. Here we go. That has, the top of the springs moved. So pull that back out. Right, so that's in there. Let's try again. Then we need to slot in the securing pin. So what we have to do next is put the wheels back on and then we'll uh, adjust the handbrake from inside. So the final job is to just adjust the handbrake. And because it's so difficult to film in here while I'm doing that, uh, you see the nut there on the end of that thread. Now I've tightened it up so to take to take up the slack there. And so when we pull the handbrake up, we should have between three and seven clicks. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now usually click number three should hold the wheels solid so it's fully off now. So with the wheels that's because the, you can hear the sound there because we just fitted brand new pads and they are self-adjusting so if we pull up on the handbrake one click you can see there's a bit more resistance. Click two. It's almost solid. Click three. Whoops. One, two, three. So now the tire won't budge. So we can say now that the pads have all been replaced properly, handbrake's been adjusted, and in that case, the job's finished. 
okay thanks for watching please subscribe there will be more coming on this car soon so again thanks for watching goodbye